Hey, my name's Paul with the CNM Cybersecurity Program. Today we're gonna go over the top five questions I get about cybersecurity. So one of the questions that I get is, why should I use a strong, unique password? I know from personal experience, it can be difficult to maintain a different password for each service. But I use a utility that's called the Password Manager that can not only help generate complex passwords, but it can also act as a vault to safely store them. You want to look for one that supports the use of an encrypted password database that requires a master key that works in conjunction with a master password for maximum safety. This will allow you to manage it in a safe and organized way and then have confidence that you're doing things safely. Go. I'm the greatest of all time. So another question that I get is, uh, what is multi-factor authentication? These are things that are unique to you, such as something you have, a smartphone or a hardware key, something you are, so think biometrics such as facial recognition, or something that you know, that's a pin or a passcode. Just two teenagers with a daring plan using computers. More businesses support the use of this additional layer of protection, and it's further enhanced when you combine it with a strong password. For example, when you log into your email, you might receive a one-time passcode or a prompt to verify with your fingerprint on your phone. You're basically showing the world that you are who you say you are and that you're signing into the service that you intend to. They are who we thought they were, and we let them off the hook. Occasionally, I get asked this question. Is keeping your software up to date better for security? You want to keep your software tools up to date. Making it into a habit to regularly check your mobile and your computing devices for the latest patches, those address security vulnerabilities. And all it takes is a few minutes to apply, and you can return to your day confident that you have the most recent protection set up. One of the ransomwares that we've encountered in the past is WannaCry. So you wanna be sure that your operating system and your apps are current, and it'll minimize your risk of falling victim to such an exploit. Another question that I get that I consider very important is, how can I secure my devices and network? Utilizing a good endpoint detection and response tool that can detect malware is key. I'm looking to buy a fine automobile from him. I don't trust something like that. In IT, we use something called the zero trust methodology. Come on, son. Rule number one, never trust anybody. Using data encryption whenever possible. You want to invest in a router with intrusion detection and prevention or a firewall that will help strengthen your security. So the most common question that I get is, what is the best way to protect my identity? Really, awareness of current events is critical. Unfortunately, fraud is on the rise, and your identity is your most valuable asset. Identity theft is not a joke, Jim. Investing in identity protection is a good safety net in addition to the other four tips that we talked about today. Limiting personal information that's disclosed on social media is also key. AI does make it possible to generate deep fakes, and it does simplify the creation of email phishing, smishing, and vishing. Don't be fooled by these practices. Fool me once, shame on you. If fool me, we can't get fooled again. If someone contacts you requesting urgent or immediate action, if you're ever unsure, disengage corresponding with that person. Have an alternate contact plan with your loved ones. Thanks for watching, everybody. If you're interested in cybersecurity, check us out at cnm.edu.